Okay, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh Shai. Once again, it's another video, and it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai, Bar Shem Kodash. All praises and glory is definitely due, especially in the times we're living in. So, I got to tell you, man, my blood is boiling right about now. And, um,. This is just more proof of the wickedness of this so-called white man, Esau, Edom. Now, let me tell you how I arrived at this information here that you see on screen. So, I was on my way to this restaurant because I can't cook because it's the Sabbath. And as I was driving, I was listening to um, uh, Urban Radio, I think it's called. Um on Sirius XM and um, Elder Apostle talks about it all the time one of the uh, people that he one of the people that he listened to on um, urban radio is um, uh, Rachel Hunter I think her name is right which I listened to her too uh, but this time I was listening to a, a dude and I'm pretty sure Elder Apostle knows well, you know, know of him because he listens to that channel. This dude's name was Clay Kane. Clay, I believe his name was Clay Kane. If I'm not mistaken, the Clay Kane show. Now, if, if I'm off on the name, please correct me in the comment section. Right. So he had this guest on and the guest was going into the term that you see here which was passed during slavery. Basically, what I'm about to read to you was an excuse for Esau that had sex with the women on the plantation, you know, in particular the so-called black woman, and happened to impregnate them what I'm about to read to you was an excuse by law for him not to take care of those children, for him to disown those children, knowing that that's his seed. Okay? And furthermore, those children could not inherit what the slave master had. And the Latin term is called patus sequitur ventrum. Now, like I said, the guest, I, the guy's uh, a show on urban radio is called um, The Clay Kane Show, I believe. And he had this guest, and this guest went into this. Now, you can imagine, I'm getting all excited, and I'm trying to, I kept saying the name in my mind so I couldn't forget it. All right, Portus Sequitur. Back then I was saying Portus, Port, Portus Sequitur. It's actually Portus Sequitur. But I kept saying Portus because I wanted to remember it. So when I had a chance, because I'm driving, when I had a chance to look it up, then I could read it and understand it more. Okay? So this is it right here. And this is just more proof of the wickedness of Esau. Okay? So let's read it, right? This is from the Latin Portus Sequitur Ventrum. The translation is, that which is born follows the womb. Also, patus was a legal doctrine passed in colonial Virginia in 1662 and other English crown colonies in the Americas, which defined the legal status of children born there. The doctrine mandated that all children would inherit the legal status of their mothers, not their fathers. Now, by law, if you go back to the scriptures, and this, you know, <laughs> earlier I did a lesson going into Esau not beholding the face of the Heavenly Father. He can't follow the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Bible. When you go back to the Bible, the offspring is supposed to inherit the rights of the father. That's how it goes. But here Esau is changing it. 
Okay? Let's bring in the scripture here. Esau is saying <clears throat> that it goes by the mother and not the father. And this reminds me, and the reason why Esau did that was to get out of the responsibility. And this show also shows his hatred. Because let's say if Esau took a woman on the plantation, a so-called black woman, had sex with her and happened to impregnate her, in some cases the child would come out looking like the mother. Right? And Esau would be like, no, I'm not taking it. That's not mine. That is yours. Okay? And that was the document that was passed so he could get out of the responsibility of taking care of that offspring. You see how wicked this devil is? <laughs> now, let's bring in the scripture here. Daniel 7 and 25. Right? Daniel 7 and 25. And that's why I tell you my blood was boiling when I was reading it. I mean, I keep... <laughs> this devil has done so much wickedness that it's... <laughs> I'm at a loss for words here. Daniel 7 and 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Let's talk about this devil, Esau. Okay? The slave master. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and a dividing of times and we're in that time now he's still ruling but the point is he shall think to change times and laws now when you go back to the Bible all right when a man has sex with a woman, the offspring that comes out belongs to him, belongs to that man. That's his offspring, no matter what the offspring look like. But because the offspring of Esau having sex with a so-called black woman, in this case a slave, a female slave, because the offspring would look like a so-called black person, whether it's light skin or dark skin, Esau did not want to acknowledge that offspring and through this document Esau was able to cast away that doctrine and even kept that not I'm sorry not cast away that doctrine cast away that that seed is what I wanted to say excuse me not acknowledging that that seed was his but then they have the nerve they have the nerve to want to put you in jail if you fail to pay so-called child support this was a doctrine that Esau created to get out of so-called child support. We're reading it here. Let's read it again. Partus sequitur ventrum. That which is born follows the womb. Also, partus was a legal doc doctrine passed in colonial Virginia in 1662 and other English crown colonies in the Americas, which defined the legal status of children born there the doctrine mandated that all children would inherit the legal status of their mothers. As such, listen good, listen real good. As such, children of enslaved women would be born into slavery, even if the father was a slave master. Now, this shows you that the so-called white man does not go according to the Bible, because in the Bible... The father owns the seed. That is the offspring of the father. Okay, not the mother. The offspring of the father. Okay? As such, children of enslaved women would be born into slavery. The legal doctrine of patus sequitur ventrum was derived from Roman civil law. And the Romans were what? They were Edomites. Specifically, the portions concerning slavery and personal property chattels. And this way, the Edomites could keep, even if they had a little fun, so in their so-called royal oats, if you will, even if they had a little fun with the slaves, they could still keep their property. They could still keep their valuables. When by right, their property and valuables was, to, was supposed to go to their heir, which would be their offspring. You see? 
<laughs> Let's bring in another scripture here. Frame of mischief by law. I got to bring that one in. And this is a perfect example. Perfect example. This scripture right here. This is the book of Psalm 94 and 20. It says, Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? The Esau represents the throne of iniquity. He's the man of sin. So the, so the scripture is asking the question, can he have fellowship with the heavenly father? The answer is no. Not in a righteous capacity. He can have fellowship with the heavenly father in a wicked capacity because he's the wicked. The heavenly father created him to be the wicked, but not in a righteous capacity. All right. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by law. There's your example. Which frameth mischief by law. Patus sequitur ventrum is an example of framing mischief by law because it's mischief. It's wickedness. If you have sex with a, a female slave, if you bring forth seed, that seed is supposed to inherit what you have because that's your seed. But Esau didn't see it that way. Okay? <laughs> Patus sequitur ventrum soon spread from the colony of Virginia to all of the 13 colonies. As a function of the political econ economy of chattel slavery in colonial America. The, leg the legalism of Patus sequitur ventrum exempted, listen good, exempted the biological father from relationship toward children he fathered with enslaved women. But he has the nerve, once again, he has the nerve to put you in jail if you don't pay so-called child support. What about him paying child support, huh? <laughs> but no, the so-called white man's not the devil. No, you can't say that. You can't say that he's the devil. What the hell is this then? This bit of history here. The, bi the biological father from relationship toward children he fathered with enslaved women and gave all rights in the children to the slave owner. The, uh, the denial of paternity to enslaved children. The denial of paternity to, the, to enslaved children secured the slaveholder's right to profit from exploiting the labor of children engendered, bred, and born into slavery. The doctrine also meant that multiracial children with, with white mothers were born free. Early generations of free Negroes in the American South were, fo were formed from unions between free working class, usually mixed race women, and black men. So basically, this was a way patus sequitur uh, ventrum, this was a way for Esau to deny his paternity to the children that he fathered with the slave women. I mean, we don't have to read anymore. And that's an example of Psalm 94 and 20, which frameth mischief by law. Matter of fact, let's bring in another scripture, the book of Job 13 and 4. But ye, talking about Esau, Edom, but ye are forgers of lies. You are all physicians of no value, forger of lies. That's what this document was, this legal document. Passed in 1662. It was 
a forged lie because in the Bible it speaks about the father. As a matter of fact, let's bring that in. The father carries the seed. The father owns the seed. So the father is supposed to have responsibility for his seed. Now, if Esau had seed with an enslaved woman, he didn't see it that way back then and created some fancy schmancy doctrine to get out of his responsibility. That's what it was all about. And this shows you that Esau does not follow the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. Another example. Let's get the book of 1 Corinthians. What is it? The uh, 12th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, the 8th verse. For the man is not of the woman but the woman of the man. So the man carries the seed. The man carries the seed. This is why the, the father owns who? The father owns the daughter. Let's bring in uh, the book of Wisdom of Solomon, the seventh chapter. Wisdom of Solomon, the seventh chapter, the second verse. Well, let me start at the first verse. I myself am also a mortal man like to all and the offspring of him that was first made of the earth. And in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of 10 months, being compacted in blood of the seed of man, meaning who? The father, the seed of the father. It didn't say the seed of the mother. It said the seed of the father. So the father owns that seed. And Esau knows this. That's why they had to create that legal document to get out of the responsibility of taking care of their seed that they fathered with enslaved women on the plantation. Because Esau had this wild fetish for the so-called black woman on the plantation. Now, to be fair, some of those slave masters could have been Jake's too, that looked like Edomites, some of them, but that doesn't negate the point. The point is they had to create a legal document so that they could get out of supporting the children that they fathered with enslaved women. And it's called Pautus Sequitur Ventrum. And I found out about that information by listening to the Clay Kane show on urban radio on XM XM radio again wisdom of Solomon 7 and 2 and in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of 10 months being compacted in blood and of the seed of man this clearly proves that it's the man that carries the seed the man owns the seed that's his seed and the pleasure that came with sleep meaning sex So this is just one more example of showing you the wickedness of this so-called white man. That's why he's called the wicked in the scriptures. Patus sequitur ventrum. Now I hope you learned something. I hope you were edified by this information. I'll see you in the next video.